In today's video, we're going to create a simple parametric table. By a table, I mean something you would eat off, not just a <laughs> spreadsheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to create something very simple and give you the opportunity then to take that simple parametric table, use what you've learned, and create something else. In the next video, the one after this one, I will create an assembly using parametric pieces for this table. So I'll create the legs separately. But for now, we're going to create it as one piece. We're going to use a spreadsheet and we're going to create a parametric design. Let me first show you what version of FreeCAD I'm using. So if I go to help and about FreeCAD, here you can see I am using 0.19, it's actually 0.19.1, I think they call it. The revision number is 24276 git. The latest stable release is what I'm using. I haven't been in check to see if they've updated it. I should probably do that, but it's it's the one that was released as 0 0.19. So if you want to follow along, I strongly recommend you using 0 0.19 and not an older version. First things first, I always start in part design. If you're not on the part design workbench, I recommend you click part design on the workbench, let that load, and you'll be in the same screen that I'm in. Now I do have this box down here. That is so you can see what key presses I make. So I've been messing with this mouse setup for a while to try and get it to work so that OBS will actually record the larger mouse it's now a red mouse with a yellow background um, per some of my uh, subscribers that, that asked for that because of their vision is poor. So it helps everybody to be able to see the mouse, where the mouse is floating to. And what we're going to do is we're going to get started here and create a new file. So we're going to click up here. I'm also going to use the zoom from Windows just to zoom in so you can see that uh, you know what I'm pressing up here. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do that for every single thing, but I'm going to do it for um, areas where we're using constraints, etc. Just so you can see what I'm doing. So bear with me while I work with that because I haven't used it before. So here we go. We're going to start a new file. And the first thing we do when we start a new file is we save it as, and then we give it a name. So I'm going to call this um, beginner7. and just save it. So this is my beginner seven file. And what I like to do is I create a part and then I create a body inside that part. So now I have a part, I have a body, I'm gonna create a sketch. And sketch, the new sketch is this guy here. Let's see if that zoom in thing will work for you. So that's the new sketch. That's what we're gonna create. So. In the past, I've done the zoom-ins in the post-processing, but it's much easier if I can do it as I go. So we're going to see how that works out. Of course, it shows you down here when I press the Win key and the Plus key um, to zoom in. So don't worry about that. So let's start a new sketch. And in this case, we're going to start the sketch on the XY plane. So of course, I can select the XY plane from here, or I can just go here and select it. And it selects the same plane. Say OK. So one thing I noticed with FreeCAD is when I do that, it zooms up way in. And if I create something that looks like a table here, it's not even going to be a millimeter big. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I'm just scrolling my middle mouse button. And then I'm going to create my table. Of course, we're going to dimension it eventually. So that won't matter. But the table is going to look something like a table top like this. And that is basically the shape of a table. And what we're going to do is we're going to add four legs and we're going to add a recess underneath this table. And we're going to keep it as simple as we can, just so that it's easy for you to follow along on how to create a parametric design. Now, before I dimension anything, I always want to um, constrain this as much as possible using geometry. And the way I do that, a lot of times if I'm using a rectangular or square shape, I will click this corner, this corner, the center point, and then I'll use 
the symmetry um, constraint and that symmetry constraint will lock that box so now that it's locked onto this center point most of my designs many of my designs in FreeCAD anyway use the center point as an origin in the center of the of the model um, sometimes you might want to use this as the bottom left corner but many times if you can use it as the center it makes things like symmetry much easier now before we go ahead and create our spreadsheet we can dimension these or we can stop this sketch and go and create the spreadsheet first it really doesn't matter so while we're here I'm just going to add the dimensions that we're going to use so obviously there's going to be a table length and there's going to be a table width so those are just two dimensions and because we have the symmetry it knows that this side is the same dimension as this side it knows this side is the same dimension as this side so we're fully constrained now another thing I like to point out is if I click something now you can see on my cursor I still have this guy selected if I right click it'll take that off so I don't have that anymore I'll move those dimensions out of the way because I don't it's just a personal pet peeve I don't like them to be on there then I'm going to close that sketch and now we have the sketch in the middle of the screen we can pad it so we're going to create a pad and we're not going to worry about this dimension either at the moment so we'll just we'll accept 10. so that's our table top and now what we want to do is to create a spreadsheet so we can start putting our dimensions on there the parametric dimensions and in the spreadsheet we can use different things like calculation uh, to decide what proportions our table has okay so to start a spreadsheet what we do is we go to our workbenches and we switch to the spreadsheet workbench then we create a new spreadsheet and it doesn't look like it did anything but in fact if you go to the model tree you'll see our spreadsheet is there now I can double click that spreadsheet and that will open up our spreadsheet and if I want to see that alongside my model I go up to my windows and I say tile and now I have the spreadsheet on one side and the model on the other and if I click in the model I can still do all the same moves that I've been doing with the model in that smaller um, window so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our spreadsheet and we're just going to label what we want. So we have um, top length, so that's the table top length. We have the top width. So the, the top length is obviously the long direction and the width is the short direction. That's how I view a table. So. And we're going to have uh, top thickness. So that's the dimension for that thickness. Now, what we could do is we could say, okay, anytime you make a table top a certain dimension, we want the width to be a proportion of that. So I could say, um, in this case, if you look at my proportions, it looks like my length is about twice what the width is. So we could calculate this. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a link between this label and this column and there's an easy way to do that I can show you the longhand way but the e there's a really easy way to do it so first things first I was going to show you how to run my macro or a macro and I have that macro it's called easy alias but what I need to do first is to show you how to load it up for yourself so if you go into the macros and you click add-ons and just say okay and then click on macros and if you scroll down you will see easy alias and if you click on that easy alias and you're just gonna say install 
and that will install it for you. So um, I'm just going to, I'm going to actually update mine and then just say close. And you select easy alias. And you say execute. And what it'll do, easy alias will actually alias these guys here. So I'm actually going to just run that one more time because it didn't work for some reason. Oh, it's giving me an error. Ah. I need to select the spreadsheet. I need to make sure my spreadsheet is selected. Select all my uh, labels, macro, easy alias. And now you see this B column actually turned yellow. Now what that B column turning yellow means is that this value is linked to this guy. So if you look here, when I click there, my alias is top length. When I click there, my alias is top width. When I click there, my alias is top thickness. So now if we give this a length, we can say, um, let's start out with a 900 millimeters. And we're gonna give this width, we're gonna say it equals our top length. Divided by two. And of course, you can use whatever ratio you want. And then our thickness, we're going to say, is 80 millimeters, a nice thick table. Now, you're probably wondering, if you added all this, why didn't this change? Well, the reason is we haven't linked these parameters to this drawing, to this model. And we do that through the sketch. So I'm going to show you that. I'm actually going to just minimize my sketch, set my window back to a full size, just so you can see it. Then I'm going to go back to my body, into my pad, go to my sketch, and double click the sketch, and now the sketch is open. So I'm going to double click on that dimension, and that will bring up the edit box. And then, and I'm going to zoom in for this so you can see it. If you look on that right side here, there's a little um, circle with what looks like a sine wave in it. I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be. But if you click on that, it will open the formula editor. And the formula editor will allow you to then select dimensions off that spreadsheet. So I'm going to say, to select it off the spreadsheet, you first have to say spreadsheet. And as soon as it pops up here, you can down arrow and click enter. And then you're going to say top. And you see right away, I have my options. So I can down arrow to the top length. And notice that the result is already turned to 900. And I'll say OK. And then I'll say OK to that. And now you can see my dimensions actually turned blue because it's a reference dimension now. So I have a reference dimension for my length and I want one for my width. And remember my width on the spreadsheet, the width is half the length. So the width is going to be 450. So let's try that. So we'll double click that. We'll hit that little formula editor. We'll bring that over here so you can see it. And I'll just zoom in one more time. I'm going to go to spreadsheet, down arrow, select, top. And this time we're picking top width. So immediately you can see it's 450 as we expected and say OK. And then I'm going to zoom back out. And we say OK to that. And now our table is the dimensions from the spreadsheet. So if I close this, 
and I hit this guy, this is the show me everything um, fit to the window. So now you can see my tabletop has changed sizes. Well, we also want the thickness to change. So to do that, we go into our pad. And if we look at our pad length, I'm just going to open that up a little bit. Not that guy, this guy. There we go. If we go into our pad length, you can see the formula editor is there again. Now it's length and not length two. So it's the 10 millimeters that we set. And what we're going to do is we're going to click that formula editor. We're going to type spreadsheet. And we're going to say top and down to thickness. And we'll say OK. And one thing to remember is sometimes for it to actually update, you need to tab off the settings. So tab off and there's my table thickness. So now I have an 80 um, thick tabletop. Now let's get our spreadsheet open again. And I'm going to retile these. So I'll just hit tile. And don't worry if they come in left and right. It just it depends which one you have current as to how they're going to um, line up. So I'm going to fit that to the window. And now, of course, if I change this dimension, let's say I change it to 700. What's going to happen is this one will change to 700. This one will recalculate to 350. So what I like to do is in this column is I like to type calculated so that I don't accidentally change that one. So now I know that this one is calculated from this one. This one is not calculated. So if I just want to see it 60, again, I just change it to 60. And there my model is already changing. So you can see that is a fully parametric tabletop that we can change. So it's not very exciting as just as a square. So we are going to change that here in a second. Now we have our basic table. We're just going to draw some legs. We're actually just going to pad the legs on it. So we're not going to make them separate. But I just want to show you a technique for um, keeping the legs in the right spot on this table when you're doing a parametric sketch. So first thing we need to do is go back to our part design workbench. So let's do that. Just click on part design. It should be very quick because you already had part design loaded. It only takes a long time if you don't have part design loaded um, already. So if I went to a uh, workbench that I haven't already loaded, it'll take a little bit longer, but it's still not a big deal. Okay, so I'm going to create a new sketch, and I'm going to create that on the XY plane, which is where our original table was. And remember, for beginners, remember that annoyingly, or not, depends how you consider this, the model switches itself off automatically. So if we want to see the model, we go back to our model tab, go to the part, click the part, press the space bar, and there's our model back again. So now we can continue to edit our sketch. I'm going to click tasks so you can see I'm still in the sketch editor. And we are back to where we want to be. Now, remember, if we want to be able to see the cursor and, and where our sketches and our sketch lines that are behind this table, we need to use our sectional view. The sectional view is this one here. So this little guy is a blue guy that has a um, a little bit of a uh, plane in it, I guess. And when we click that, if I zoom back out, you'll see now I can see my cursor and I'll be able to see the lines that I draw. Now for this table, I'm not going to go mad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create just a square leg. And I'm going to create it in place because we're going to pad it on there. Now, if I was creating an assembly, if this was going to be an assembly, I might want to create that around here and do all the, the same things I normally do for symmetry, etc. But in this case, I'm actually going to create it as a pad. So you normally wouldn't create a table 
with the legs as part of that main model. You would normally create them as a separate piece and do them as an assembly. But again, we're doing this for beginners. We're doing this so that you can see how to create um, a parametric sketch and a parametric model. And so we're going to create this all in one piece. So once more, I have the square or the rectangular um, creator on my cursor. I'm going to right click that. Off that goes. And this is my leg. It's a rudimentary leg. And the thing that's going to be important with my leg is I want this leg to line up with this edge. And I may want it to line up with a clearance or I may want it to line up completely on the edge. For the sake of this model, I'm, going to, I'm actually going to make it line up on this edge. So I'm going to create um, a dimension. Now, remember I always say about doing the geometry first. Well, there's not much geometry besides these horizontal and vertical lines that are automatically put in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to dimension to the outside of this one and the outside of this one from this center point. So here goes a dimension. And it's going to go from that center point to that point. And I'm going to say, OK. And then I'm going to go in the vertical dimension this way to that point and say, OK. And now I have where my leg will sit. So I'm just going to move that dimension over here just so we can see it. So we know that this dimension from here to here should be half of this width. And we know that this dimension from here to here should be half of this length. Now, there's two ways we could do that. We can go in here and apply it um, a length that is top length divided by 2. And that would give us the correct dimension, and it would be parametric. Or we can calculate that on our spreadsheet first and use a dimension that's labeled on the spreadsheet. It's entirely up to you how you want to do that. I don't think there's a best way to do it. I'm going to do it the quickest way, which is just to edit this. Go into the formula editor. I'm going to say spreadsheet and then top length. And I'm just going to say divided by two. So I'm doing the math in the formula editor. Say OK. Say OK again. And now you can see that one is, is the exact dimension that we want. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say spreadsheet and top width and divide that by two say okay and now our position of our leg is right on that corner and then we're going to need um, a leg well, I'm going to call this one width because it goes with the width of the table. But this one, unfortunately, I'm going to call this thickness because the length of the leg is obviously going to be the, the length that it drops down. So, so I'm going to create this dimension. And I'm going to create this dimension just to constrain our model. So now we have a leg and I'm going to close that and I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and I'm going to say leg width leg thickness and leg length. I'm going to do the same thing with the easy alias. I'm going to select those three. I'm going to make sure I have my spreadsheet selected. Select those three. I'm going to go to my macro and I'm going to run that easy alias. And there I have it. So now my leg width 
I would say we want it to be somewhere similar to the top thickness. So let's say 50 for this one. And if we want square legs, we could say that the leg thickness is the same as the leg width. So we can certainly do that if we're having square legs. If we want them to be separate, we'll keep them separate and dimension them without calculating. And then our leg length is going to be um, 600 in this case. But again, it's arbitrary. And you could also decide that you wanted the leg length to be um, some ratio to the table top length. So it's entirely up to you how you do that. But again, I've assigned these dimensions. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my model, back into my sketch. Um, and just one thing there, I want to just show you that down here, let me zoom in down there. Down here, there is tabs for the, the two things that you have on the screen. So the spreadsheet and the model. So you to switch between them, you're just literally clicking on that one. So I just want to make that clear because I did that quickly and I want to make sure that you saw what I did. Okay, so for these guys, now remember, we're back in here, but we don't have this selected. So we have to click this again so we can see our sketch. And there we go. Or we could turn off the model completely now if we wanted to. So if we to do that, we just go model, go to the part, hit spacebar and the model gets out of our way so remember you can turn things on and off at any time with the spacebar if you select them in that model tree hit them with the spacebar they'll turn on or they'll turn off now double click this can do it quickly double click that go into the uh, formula editor spreadsheet and this one is going to be uh, leg thickness and I'll say okay say okay so I did that thickness because length is going to be from the bottom of the uh, tabletop to the end of the leg but this one is going to be width because it lines up with that width so spreadsheet leg width Say OK. And now my um, leg is fully parametric. So I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to pad that leg. And I'm going to pad it to spreadsheet leg length. And say OK. I'm going to click this just so you can see where it is. It should be on there. Oh, I turned off my part. So I have to go back in here and turn on the part. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see it. So, so there we go. So when you turn off the part, it turns off all the, all the model underneath it. So you can turn off individual um, pieces if you want to. Like I can turn off the leg if I hit that. Turn this pad on, that's just the tabletop. Turn this one on, it's the tabletop and the leg. Now, one thing to note, I created my tabletop here on the zero, zero of the XY plane and my leg the same. So my leg length is now from the top of the tabletop all the way down. If I want that to be the bottom of the tabletop, I can, there's plenty of ways to do it but we can certainly do it with an offset sketch and just use our parametric um, ability to offset that. So if I go to the sketch and see if you can figure it out before I show you, see if you can figure it out for yourself, how you would do that. So you can pause the video and take a look at it if that's something you want to try. I'll show you how you do it. So we go to this attachment and we go to our position and we go to our Z position and I'm just going to move that up there and we tell this that it's the spreadsheet and then top thickness say OK 
and then tab off there. And now our table leg starts at wherever this ends. So if we change that, we'll see our table leg will change. So let's go back to our spreadsheet. Let's tile our windows so we can see back in here. I'm going to hit that center of the model. So now if I change my top thickness, if I change it to 40, you'll see my leg moved up as well because my offset of my sketch moved at the same time. So it's keeping everything together. And you'll also see if I change my table length, if I go back to that 900 length I had, you'll see my table leg moves and stays on that outer edge. So that's great. We've got a one-legged table and it's fully parametric. So if I want to change the thickness of that leg to 20, I can do that. And you'll see that the thickness changed, um, but the width did not. And I can change the width. Um, but actually, I like the 50-50 better, so I'm going to leave that alone. And now all we need is three other legs. So we could create three other sketches. That would be one way to get there. Um, we could go back to our sketch and create all four legs in one sketch. Uh, it starts to get a little complicated that way. Or in part design, there's actually a way that we can just mirror these legs. And that's what we're going to do. So this is actually more simple than it looks. And what we do is we're going to, we're basically going to just mirror this leg and we're going to do it with this multi transform. So we have a create a multi transform feature and we just click on there and it's going to multi transform our pad and our pad. We're going to right click to add a transformation right here. So I'll right click that. And I'm going to add a mirrored transformation. Now, when I do that, it actually asks me what direction do I want to um, mirror in. And I'm going to say, when I look at it, it shows the vertical sketch axis. And let me see if I can show that for you. My, uh, my text box is actually over the top of that right now so let me just see if i can move that for you okay so i moved the little box over just so you can see so this is the vertical sketch axis so what we've done is we've we've moved or sorry we've mirrored our pad so now we have two legs so a two-legged table that's a bit better than a one-legged table but not great so now what we're going to do is we are going to add another feature. So we'll right click down here. We'll say add a mirror transformation. And this time we are going to do the horizontal sketch axis. And now we have all four legs all set up on the table. So we can say OK to that. We'll accept that. Let's just test our parametric stuff. Oh, OK to that. Test our parametric stuff to make sure that it's still all working. And sure enough, our legs are all mirroring exactly the same as they should. They're all sitting nicely and everything works the way we expected it to. So there's our table, parametric legs. Everything looks good. Now we could leave it there, but what I want to show you is we're going to do a little recess in the bottom here. And I'll just show you how to create one more parametric piece and then you should be all set. So to do that, I am going to use my normal mode, which is I will create the sketch and I will rough it in there where I want it. And then we'll go from there. So we're going to hit a new sketch. It's also going to be on the XY plane. And I'm going to go back here. I'm going to turn on that part again so that I can see my sketch parameters. I'm going to hit this guy and go with that. Uh, showing it on a plane there. I think I turned off my sketch by mistake. I'm going to turn it back on. And then we're going to go in and we're going to create our uh, 
shape. So we know our shape needs to look something like this. It's just a clearance. We're going to do a recess in the table. So it's going to be a clearance that goes like this around each leg. Like that. And if I could, if I could draw better, I would get them those constraints to come on. If you look, if you watch closely on my cursor right now, when this comes down to almost horizontal, you'll see the horizontal line appears. So if we can zoom in on that and show you that. So as I come down here, you see that little horizontal line appearing. That means it's going to apply that horizontal constraint. So if I go here, and then when I go up here, if I'm over here, we're not going to get it. If I go there, you see it pops on. That means we're going to get the horizontal, the vertical constraint. And then if I go over to this one, I'm not getting it here, but I want to close this line, so I'm going to click on there. Then I'm going to right click. I'm going to zoom back out, and I'm going to select this line and tell it it's horizontal. And this one. So if you use that little cursor trick, you can get them more or less horizontal, vertical as you go. But obviously, you can always add it later if that's what you want to do. So you can see I have my shape all set up. And that's basically the, the cutout that I'm going to do. So I'm going to leave the legs alone. And I'm just going to put a recess under the table. Uh, and I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to parametrically do that recess so that when we change the size of our table um, our piece changes to fit it and this will help if you're doing a model where you have some clearances or you have something that you want to keep in clearance it'll help you to to figure out how to do that parametrically okay so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, make this piece symmetrical around that center point and then we're also going to make these lines symmetrical around that center line and we're going to make these lines symmetrical around that center line then we're going to do the same in this direction Actually, the outside ones are the ones we care about. Select it. That one and that line. So it's two points. That point, that point, and then a line. And we go to symmetrical. And now what I normally do to test what's, what's movable is I'll start shifting things around to see what's movable. And I don't know why I'm seeing a ghost behind there. That's just why I was holding it down. So... So I can see that we're movable, but we're, we're moving in a pretty good, a pretty good uh, symmetrical way, except for these two lines. So this line and this line need to be symmetrical as well for that. So now I have that. If you look, those are symmetrical. Those are symmetrical. Those are symmetrical. Looks like we got pretty good symmetry. So, so now we want to dimension it in a way that it's it's always going to be just clear of the legs in the corners, and we want a little bit of clearance on the ends here. So we can put a dimension across here. That'll be our first dimension. And we know we want that dimension to be the length minus two times whatever our clearance is. And then we know we want this dimension to be our width minus two times whatever the clearance is. So you can see right away that the clearance is something that we want on our parametric spreadsheet. So let's go back into our tiled view. So now we're going to have, we're just going to call this clearance. And 
and we're going to use our easy alias. Oh, I didn't have the spreadsheet selected. So you have to have that spreadsheet selected when you run the easy alias because it's looking for what spreadsheet am I supposed to be working on. So if I make this, let's say 40 millimeters for now. And so this dimension, if I edit it, I go in here and I know it's spreadsheet, top length. minus spreadsheet so you have to re you have to tell it the the clearance is coming from the spreadsheet clearance times two and say okay now we have our clearance either side because we're symmetrical around this this line so that clearance has to be evenly spread and we have our clearance times two then we're going to do the same with this one except we're going to use table width so we're going to say spreadsheet top width minus spreadsheet clearance times two and we'll say okay so now we know we have our clearance in the right spot then we need to figure out where do these lines go so they're going to be short of our legs and we want them to be um, Well, do we want them to be? So let's think about this. All right, one way we could do this is bring this leg. So this leg is sitting out here. And we could bring this down to the edge of the leg if we wanted to. And bring this to the inside edge of the leg. Because we, we could do that. And we could add clearance if we want to. Um, that's entirely up to us. So we know where this edge is, of course. So we could actually dimension from that edge back this way. Uh, or we can dimension, I think the way I prefer is to dimension out of here to this edge. And so this would be our leg sits in here. So this would be to our inside leg dimension. So it's half of our table length minus our table leg thickness so let's do that dimension and see how that looks so if we go from that point to that point and we say this should be spreadsheet and just another another point here of when you when you're using these um spreadsheet values so when I say spreadsheet and then I say top and I come down to length and I hit enter, that's when you get that um, you get that text to, to show up. So I'm going to show you when we do it on the spreadsheet part again. So this is going to be minus and then spreadsheet. So I come down here, I hit enter. And that way I make sure I have the spreadsheet dot something and this is going to be uh, leg thickness so leg thickness and I just noticed that that should be I go back here that should be divided by two so it should be half the top length so spreadsheet dot top length divided by two minus the spreadsheet dot leg thickness so let's give that an okay we'll say okay now that piece 
is the difference between 50 and what we allowed to be 40 as clearance. So it should only be 10 millimeters, which it is. So that's pretty good. So let's just drop that down there. And then we want to do the same thing for this inside face. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this clearance to just be 20, just so I've got a bigger, I'm doing that just so I've got a bigger um, step there. And so that's, that's actually going to move over to there, but it, it's actually not doing it right now from the spreadsheet. So if I go into this dimension and say, okay, I think it'll update. There you go. So, so I did that so that our clearance wasn't so big so that we had a bit more pronounced step there so you can see it. So now what we want to do is we want to, we want to make a dimension that goes from here out to this. It's going to be one of these in here and this is going to be and I'll show you again so spreadsheet down arrow enter and if you watch down here you can see exactly what I'm typing so I typed SPR that popped up the spreadsheet in a down arrow and then I hit enter so this is going to be top and then width divided by two minus leg width. Oh, let's say spreadsheet. <laughs> spreadsheet. Let's get my arrow out of the way. And then leg width. And say OK. And now if I hit OK, and there we have a line, it's fully constrained. It's each one is the same clearance. So now if we say, I'm going to minimize that, I'm going to maximize that. Get rid of that. And now if we say OK to our sketch, and now we create a pocket based on that sketch. And our pocket is actually starting at the top of the table. So we've got it, it's actually the, not where we want it to be. So we're gonna use that same offset technique. But first, I'm gonna say that this goes um, spreadsheet. top thickness divided by two and it's actually coming this way so it'll be fine once we do the offset so I'm going to say okay I'm going to go back in here go back into this pocket I'm going to go back to the attachment now think about this do you know how to do this see if you can do it before I show you it so I go into the attachment. Again, it's the Z direction. And I call this spreadsheet. And it's going to be top thickness. So I want it to start on, on the other side of that table. So thickness. And then I tab away from it. And now if you look, you actually have a recess in there and this clearance line those are actually coincident but it still shows a little step there even though there isn't one and now that's a fully parametric table with the clearance set in so let's open up our spreadsheet and see we're gonna once more tile those two we're gonna move this over there a little bit so you can see it and now I can change, if I change my clearance, it's going to change this thickness here. If I change my um, 
table length. If I go back to 700, everything changes. The clearance stays the same. That cutout stays the same. It's still 50% of my um, top thickness. If I make my top thickness 60, now I've got a 30 deep recess because I'm half of that. And I can make my legs a bit shorter. Get a coffee table. And there you have it. It's a fully parametric table. Again, you wouldn't normally model a table with these legs being pads of this part. They would actually be separate pieces and we'd put them in an assembly. But we haven't done assemblies yet, so I didn't want to do that in this video. Maybe in the next video we'll do assemblies and I'll show you how to make a parametric leg and we'll assemble it to the tabletop. So once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know that in the comments. I'd appreciate it. Uh, if there's anything else you'd rather see, if you like the zooming in, leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, if there's if you like that pointer the red pointer with, with the yellow background and We also changed our constraints of black because again people with poor vision Apparently can see that better than the red constraint. So I think we're in good shape for everybody If you have any comments any questions, please just leave a comment below and I'll do my best to respond uh, Thanks again for everybody who subscribed if you haven't subscribed yet Hit the subscribe button. Let's get some uh, subscribers on the channel and get some input and we can produce videos for things that you want to see and for things that you want to be able to do in FreeCAD or things that you want to be able to do with 3D printing or things you want to be able to do with your CNC router. So uh, we're not limited just to FreeCAD. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Just want to say a big thanks to all of our Patreons. Uh, we have a couple of new ones. Just want to say thank you to everybody for signing up. It does help the channel. We are working towards a new microphone so we can make these voiceovers a little easier to create. So thanks again. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. And be sure to leave me a comment and let me know if there's anything else that you want to see. Thanks.